It was like any other autumnal day, very cold and with a stiff breeze, but otherwise fine. I thought there might have been a few more launches that day, as it was possibly going to be one of the last flyable days before winter, before the airfield becomes waterlogged. I was doing something I had done many times before, providing a tow launch for gliders at my local club. I was the sole user of the aircraft that day, and had been the day before too. I had no reason to think that the aircraft was anything but serviceable, but I conducted my pre-flight checks as normal. With the cowlings off, I checked the fluids, saw that nothing was loose, I fueled up and checked the tow rope, all the usual things. Looking back, perhaps my checks weren't quite as thorough as usual. I'd flown the day before and I'd also completed the aircraft's 50 hour service. But I was happy, I was looking forward to flying, conditions were good and I felt fine and well rested. Our aircraft has a commercial, off-the-shelf active carbon monoxide detector in the oddments packet in the panel. It's a sealed unit with a battery life of 10 years, and I tested it before it was put in the aircraft. The glider pilots were coming out in reasonable numbers after I'd conducted my pre-flight checks. It wasn't amazingly soarable, so it was likely I'd be towing on and off all day. Some training was going on too, so some of those flights would be shorter and more launches needed. Nothing unusual about that, I was happy because I like flying. The little grid had built at the launch and the rope was attached and the release checked. I was ready to start launching. I started the aircraft without any trouble. As it was a cold day, I had the cabin heater on with all the vents closed. With the temperature nearing ready, I taxied up to the launch point. I completed my final checks once the glider was hooked up. The usual calls to take up slack were made and soon it was all out, meaning we were ready to take off. Initial acceleration was normal and the aircraft was performing as expected. For the first tow of the day, I'm always at a heightened state of alert. The glider pilot behind me was someone I trusted, but my fingers were locked around the release as ever. T's and P's appeared fine and the climb rate acceptable. The glider on the back was in the right position and I could see them in the mirror. At around 500 feet, the cabin jarred to the piercing sound of the active carbon monoxide detector going off. It was loud, even with my headset on. I turned the heater off as my first action and then pushed the little vents open in the windows. I still needed to keep focused on flying as I have a glider relying on me. I made a gentle turn back towards the airfield, called the tower on the radio and told them what I was doing. I got into a good position and waved the glider off by waggling my wings. They dutifully released and I was able to go to idle power and head for the ground before they would need to land. Thankfully, the carbon monoxide detector wasn't sounding anymore and I made an uneventful landing. The glider came in shortly after. I was shaken up and had a bit of a headache, but thought it was probably more psychological than physical. I was relieved to be back on the ground. The alarm had potentially prevented me from spending a day being exposed to lethal doses of carbon monoxide. Who knows how I might have become impaired by it. Just getting a gulp of fresh air does not get the carbon monoxide out of your bloodstream. Low level exposure over the day can make you very unwell. The active carbon monoxide alarm certainly surprised me. It's worth knowing what it sounds like so you know what's happening and how to silence it if you need to. The alarm sound can be heard through your headset, which is comforting. Remember, aviate, navigate and communicate in that order. If I'd had released the glider or lost control because the alarm surprised me, then it could have been a very different outcome. After a further inspection, it turned out the aircraft's exhaust had developed a crack under the heater shroud. If exhaust gases leak, this can result in carbon monoxide in the cockpit. It is odourless and tasteless and produces headaches, drowsiness or dizziness. High concentrations can cause unconsciousness and death. This was not inspected as part of the 50-hour check. It has since been added to the routine checklist. Our active carbon monoxide detector is tested too, and pilots briefed on how to use it and how it sounds. I definitely recommend flying with an active carbon monoxide detector. They're cheap, easy to use, and could save your life. It is something we have in our homes as standard practice, so worthwhile and an essential investment. Just make sure you know what to do when it goes off, and that it isn't a loose article in the cockpit. Oh, and don't neglect a check of your cabin heater either. Ensuring thorough checks are made when the aircraft is in for maintenance and carrying an active carbon monoxide detector will help mitigate the risks of carbon monoxide poisoning. Your life and those of others could depend on it.